Now, if you've looked around online at all for more than just about two seconds, you've probably figured out that the world of overdrive is vast and complex. What's important when it comes to understanding overdrive sounds and how to get good overdrive sounds is understanding your rig. What type of amp are you running? What type of guitar are you running? And in this video, we're gonna go through three different types, starting with a clean high headroom pedal platform amp. Now, if you're new to this, the term pedal platform refers to an amplifier or a modeler sound that is clean. It doesn't really break up on its own and it's high headroom, meaning you can play as loud as you want with your guitar and the amplifier or the model is not going to break up on its own. So right now I've got the Tone King Imperial Mark II pulled up. Uh, it's the clean channel and this is a clean sound or at least as clean as I like to run amps like this. So you can tell there is just a ever so slight edge of breakup coming from the amp when I really dig in, but for all intents and purposes, that's a clean sound. So with that in mind, I'm gonna dial in a tone that is kind of a, a lead sound here. If I was playing the sound on a gig, I'd want at least one overdrive that I could kick on that would completely revoice the sound of this amp. I've got my clean sound covered, now I need something with some sustain and compression. So the first pedal we've got pulled up here is the Revival Drive Compact uh, from Origin Effects. And this is a great pedal to demonstrate this because it's really, really versatile and it can emulate the preamp section of another amplifier. So it's almost like you are putting a different type of amp in front of this clean amp. So here's the sound I've got currently set on the Revival Drive. <laughs> So I would refer to this kind of sound as not transparent at all. If you notice that as soon as I kick on that overdrive, it's completely changing the character of the amplifier at all and essentially changing it from a clean, pretty Fender style amp to almost more of a Marshall, like a plexi kind of sound. Now within that sound, you've got a lot of different options. I can darken it up by rolling off some highs uh, and bringing up some lows to get less of a Marshall kind of sound and maybe more of like a, almost a Dumble sort of sound. Smoother clipping, more mid-rangey, more mid-focused kind of sound here. <laughs> And just for reference, this is the amp by itself. Anytime you see a pedal like that, amp in a box, I think this is the best use case. The pedal going straight into the front of a clean amp, where it's essentially revoicing your amplifier altogether to give it a completely different character. So now I've switched amps from my high headroom clean sound to a more edge of breakup kind of sound. And this is where your amplifier is giving you some distortion, some saturation from the preamp section and the power amp section working together, but it's not fully overdriven, meaning the amp can kind of move between clean and dirty depending on how hard you play. And this is where I like to live. Most of my amps I have set to live in this zone because I think it's the most versatile, to me, it's the most musical and expressive. Now, when it comes to making an overdrive sound great with this sort of setup, I tend to steer away from the amp in a box, medium gain pedals like we just had going into the clean amp. Instead, I go for more of the transparent light gain overdrive. So here, I've got the Brown Amplification Protein, and this is actually two overdrives in one box, but for right now, we're just gonna focus on the left side. So you can pretend that right now, this is just one overdrive pedal. Now this left side is based off of a really famous overdrive circuit called the Blues Breaker. Right here I've got my orange AD30 and I've got it set right where I like it, where if I play light and pick lightly, the amp is clean and if I dig in, it gets dirty. <laughs> Now, in my opinion, to get an overdrive to sound great in this situation, I don't want to change what the amp is doing because the amp already sounds good. I just want to add, I want to embellish. So I have this protein on the blues breaker side set with the gain relatively low, the volume going a little harder to hit the front end of the amp a little harder, and then tone to taste, how bright or how dark do you want it? And this is what it sounds like. <laughs> So you notice 
we don't have that big searing mid-rangey compressed lead sound that we just had with the clean amp and the revival drive here it still sounds like the amplifier it still sounds like the 8030 we're just adding a little bit of extra sauce on top of it. I love this for rhythm sounds or for lead parts if you just wanna step out a little bit in the mix without being too dominant, uh, but you're not gonna get a lot of compression or sustain out of it. And that's because in this situation, the overdrive is actually acting almost more as a boost, pumping up the guitar's volume and adding just a little bit of hair and then hitting the front end of the amp a little bit harder. And that's contributing to the transparency of this pedal. Now we can add more gain. If I just push the gain a little bit hotter, I'm gonna bring the level down, keep the tone where it was at. And now we start to get into slightly changing the amp's character a little bit. <laughs> thing I like about that kind of sound is it still sounds like my amplifier. It still sounds like my 8030, even when I'm pushing that much gain from the pedal itself. Now, this transparent light to medium gain overdrive sound can work really well in front of a clean amp like we just had. But to me, it's really suited best to an amplifier that's already got a little bit of saturation, a little bit of distortion happening. Now let's talk about heavy amps, heavier gain amps, and how to pair overdrives with those kind of sounds. Now, unlike the first amp, the clean amp, or the edge of breakup amp, I've already got just about as much saturation as I want and much overdrive as I want from the amplifier. So I'm not looking for more gain from a pedal. Instead, what I'm looking for is to tighten up the low end and to add just a little bit more compression and sustain. So right now I've got my Plexi plugged up and I've got the two channels jumped and I've got a sound that's pretty great. It's pretty heavy, lots of saturation, lots of gain. So it sounds good, but you can tell the low end is really flubby and there's just a lot of bass happening. And in the context of a mix, either on a record or in a live show, that's not helping you out. It's not helping your guitar stand out. It's just adding more mud and it's actually fighting with the bass guitar in the low end parts of the sonic spectrum. So one common trick is to use an overdrive like a Tube Screamer in front of a really gainy amp to tighten up that low end. Now here, I've got the TB drive uh, from Rodenberg Custom Amplification. This is the signature pedal of my good friend Tyler Bryant. And this is essentially two Tube Screamers in a box. Now. If you know this channel at all, you know that I'm not a fan of the Tube Screamer. Personally, I think they're a little overhyped, but there are a few cases where a Tube Screamer is really useful. In case one, where you might be playing a single coil guitar into a clean mid-scooped amp, the Tube Screamer is gonna be adding that mid-range back in that your guitar and your amp are lacking, and that can be a really nice sound. But what we're gonna do here is use the TS circuit to tighten up the low end of this Plexi. So like the Protein, this is two overdrives in a box. So you can see this is one side, this is the other side. So we're gonna start with this side here. And I've got the drive, the amount of gain coming from the pedal turned down, and I'm using it to hit the front end of the amp a little bit harder and add some top end, some tone. But listen to when I kick it on how much the low end tightens up. <laughs> That the amount of gain from the amp barely changes at all. And it's almost as if you don't even know there's an overdrive coming on, but there is that tightening up of the low end. The amp gets tighter, it gets more responsive. And when you're doing those palm muting chugs, it's a little bit faster on the response. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the left side here, but you can see I'm adding some drive. I'm adding some distortion from the pedal itself going into the Plexi. And uh, now we're gonna be tightening up the low end, but we're also gonna be getting a little bit more sustain uh, than just the amp by itself. <laughs> So 
there you can tell there is a lot more saturation coming from the amp, but it's almost more of a feel thing. We're getting that low end tightened up, the amp's getting more punchy and more responsive, a quicker response, and then I'm getting more sustain. So if you want a giant searing lead tone that is punchy and that cuts through the mix, taking something like a Tube Screamer and putting it in front of your really heavily overdriven amp is a great trick. Now the thing to keep in mind whenever having a discussion like this is to remember that tone is subjective. What I wanna hear coming out of my rig is gonna be slightly different, more than likely, than what you wanna hear coming out of your rig. But there are still some considerations to make to be able to get that sound out of your head and through the speakers. And one of those considerations is EQ and the amount of gain. So we've talked about what styles of overdrive might work best in front of what styles of amp, but we haven't talked about switching guitars. So I grabbed my Esquire, and this is a completely different sound than the Les Paul that I've been playing, which has PAF style humbuckers, it's more mid-rangey, it's more punchy. This is bright and twangy and more mid-scooped. <laughs> So what I've got here is the Heather Brown uh, Blessed Mother Overdrive. I bought this about a year ago, and um, it's a really unique pedal because of this control right here. She calls it the Immaculator Control, but what it is is a clean blend, and this is a really useful tool for overdrives, especially if you are switching between guitars a lot. So here it is with the clean blend all the way down. This is just the overdrive pedal. <laughs> Now that's cool, but to me it's masking this guitar a little bit. It's kind of too much mid-range, it's rolling off some of that top end, and I could dial that in with the treble and bass control here, the two band EQ, but I'm gonna take this Immaculator control and I'm gonna bring it up to about 11 o'clock and listen to how much more clarity there is. <laughs> That sounds like this guitar again. And this is not the only pedal that does this. There's lots of other pedals. In fact, the Revival Drive that we uh, showed earlier does this. The Voodoo Lab Sparkle Drive is a really great option with the clean blend. The other thing with dialing in overdrive sounds is knowing when there's too much gain on tap. This is something that I struggled with for a long time, using too much gain, too much overdrive from my pedals. What happens is it gets really compressed, uh, it gets really muddy sometimes, and you lose a lot of the character and the dynamics of your playing style and the guitar and amp that you might be using. So I'm gonna bring this uh, clean blend all the way down. I'm just gonna crank the volume and the gain here to kind of show you what I mean. <laughs> Now, it doesn't sound bad by any means, but to me, it's just, it's lacking that character. So one thing I might do is try bringing the drive down and see what that does. Same thing, I'm still getting a little too much low end, so I'm gonna bring the bass down. And that's a little bit better. You can still kind of hear the quality of the guitar coming through, but now I'm gonna bring that clean blend up and I think this is gonna be about where I want it. When it comes to dialing in your specific overdrive, really take time to understand your pedal. What kind of EQ options does it have? How much gain does it have on tap? I talked about this a little bit in the how to dial in any amplifier video, but take your pedals gain controls where it's EQ controls and max them out. Turn them all the way down, turn them all the way up and see where uh, the pedal starts to open up. Really experiment and see where the limitations of the pedal are and then set it where you like it. So those are my thoughts on how to dial in any overdrive pedal, but I wanna know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments section down below. Uh, if you wanna learn more about this stuff, I did a video course dedicated to the ins and outs of guitar tone uh, called the Tone Course. If you follow the link in the description box down below, you can get 35% off of the Tone Course for watching this video. Uh, and while you're down there, click subscribe and drop a like on the video. It really helps the channel out and I really appreciate it. My name is Rhett Scholl and remember there is no plan B.